God himself stepped into history in the person of his son and took on a human nature so that he could endure for us his own wrath and bring us to himself in everlasting joy. <laughs> what a wildly glorious gospel. I mean, the world has never conceived of such a thing that God is angry at them and has taken on human flesh to intercept his anger so it doesn't land on anybody in Jesus. That's off the charts glorious. You just have to believe all the reality behind it. It doesn't make any sense if you don't have the worldview that I just described from the first point. Now, where do I see that in Romans? Let's try this. Romans 8, 32. Oh, I love this verse. God, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. So God did not spare his own son. He had an eternal son, the exact representation of the father, like we heard in the short talk. And he takes on human flesh, becomes a man, and gives up his son, gives up his son in death. And then verse 8 of chapter 5, he shows his love for us. Okay. If you walk out of here and somebody says, oh, they just talked about wrath at that conference. You just don't know what the love of God is unless you know the magnitude of his wrath. You don't know what the love of God is. The world talks about the love of God. They don't have a clue what the love of God is. This is the love of God. That while we were still wrath-deserving sinners, Christ, the Son of God, sent by God in love, died for us, meaning bore God's wrath for us, bore our guilt, bore our sin. What happened when Jesus died? What happened when the Son of God died? Romans 8, 3, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, he had to say likeness of sinful flesh because he said sinful. And Jesus committed no sin, but he looked like he was just like us. He was just like us in every way but sin. And that he was clothed as divinity. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh. Can you paraphrase that? He, he took on flesh, he took on flesh, and God condemned sin in that flesh. Whose flesh? Jesus, Son of God's flesh. Whose sin? He had none. How can you condemn sin in the flesh of Jesus when he had none? Our sin. J.I. Pecker sums up the whole New Testament with propitiation by substitution. That's it, just the whole message. Propitiation meaning condemnation from God, deserved by sinners, lands on a substitute. That's Romans 8, 3. This is unspeakable love. God substituting himself in his son to bear our condemnation, his wrath. He condemns sin in the flesh, our sin. Or look at Romans 3.25. God put Christ forward as a propitiation, that's a removal of wrath, a swage, an absorber of wrath, by his blood, that is his death, this was to show God's righteousness. You, you, you may have a worldly, naive view of God that says, he can, just, he can just let it go. He can just sweep sin under the rug of the universe. No, he, no, he can't not with his character 
of holiness and righteousness, every sin will be punished, either in cross or in hell.